So friends, uh, probably we are at the fag end of our training for with respect to big data. Uh, we are actually try to understand the challenges with respect to big data and then the solution, right? And this solution comes up into a proper package, which is Hadoop. And Hadoop has various advantages. And uh, the most important thing is it is allowing us to deal with big data and uh, both storage side of things and processing side of things. And it is scalable and it is absolutely free. And coming to the components of Hadoop, we have HDFS, MapReduce, and YARN. These are the three components that we have. And when we talk about Hadoop ecosystem, ecosystem, Hadoop is like an operating system. And within this operating system, we can use a lot of different tools. We try to understand a couple of them. Big Hive. We've also looked at HBase. And uh, just to move the data from traditional systems to HBase, we also have various tools, different, different data ingestion tools are there. And we try to understand Apache Scoop. It's a command line interface, import export commands will be there. Post that, we talk about Apache Spark, which is though works on top of Hadoop, it is a generalized framework, generalized programming or computing framework. It has nothing to do with Hadoop infrastructure, sorry, Hadoop software or Hadoop framework. In Hadoop, we have HDFS, which is the storage device and Spark uses that. We need HDFS or any other storage device. Then Hadoop has MapReduce, which runs on low level programming abstraction, where we have map functions and reduce functions. But Spark does not require this. It has a very high latency. It does a lot of disk operations, and it is also batch operation. Whereas Spark is real time, it works in memory, that is low latency, right? And as I mentioned, it is super fast basically. And it has generalized computing approach. That means directly we are going to deal with the data. So if I have to work with Spark, the most important building blocks that we need to learn is Spark context. We talk about Spark context. Then we have RDD, and then the operations that we operate, uh, uh, operate on top of these RDDs. Spark context is the execution environment. RDD is the special data frame or special type of data which Spark understands. And then we have operations where you, you, two types of operations are there. One is lazy evaluation, that is transformations. The other one is action operations, transformations and actions. Now coming to the Spark unified engine, Spark core is something that we have learned. The Spark core is basically the fundamental component of the entire Spark architecture, which basically connects with various data sources. It does scheduling, it does uh, basically the um, re uh, replicate, uh, sorry, fault tolerance, monitoring, task monitoring, scheduling. So all the management related tasks are happening in Spark core module. And here we basically try and convert your data into RDT. This is a database or data frame API. In early versions of Spark only RDD used to be uh, allowed, but now we also have schema RDD, nothing but data frame. So if I give schema to a data frame or an RDD, it becomes data frame. We call it a schema RDD. Then we have SQL, Spark SQL, Spark Streaming, MLlib, Graphics. These are different modules that we have in Spark and we have packages. Packages are pre-written code which allow us to achieve the different capabilities that Spark is basically capable of. 
So we have readily packages, we install them, we import the packages and get the task done. Now, in the yesterday session, we have seen how to install it and how to configure it. And we have seen a few of the PySpark codes. Spark can be integrated with Scala. And Spark is developed in Scala. So it's obviously, uh, right, makes sense that Spark can understand Scala. But it can also understand Python. It can also understand R programming, of course, Java as well. From data science perspective, data analytics perspective, Python is the most famous one. And when we talk about cloud computing or cloud infrastructure, you take any name, you talk about any cloud, it has PySpark capability. Spark is readily available in these cloud platforms. And if you want to work with distributed environments, then we will be using PySpark, where your Spark context is designed with respective uh, different servers, or, or I should say different CPUs or processors, which are lying in different computers. So you simply call, or you simply initiate your Spark context using YARN as the Spark manager or cluster manager. So your, your Spark master is going to directly interact with the YARN. And when we talk about PySpark, it's nothing but Python codes which get executed in the Spark environment. Right, and yesterday we have seen a few of the things where RDD can be uh, basically, I mean, the first hand experience, right? The RDD, basically we try to explore that, which is always an unstructured object because it's going into memory. It's always in an unstructured format. Now we have learned only the interactive mode of coding yesterday. Today, let us see how do we handle a data set which is huge. This is the data set. It's still loading, right? There was a problem opening the file because of the file was huge and invalid characters are there. Okay, it's basically a big file. We try to see here. So this is the big file. Here in this, uh, basically, oops, what did I do? Okay, let me open it here. Yeah, this is your data set, right? So if you look into this data set, it is a big data set. It contains movie names. Movie names, the year at which it is released, the URL, and the bunch of empty fields where we basically have ratings. Whether the rating is given or not by a bunch of users. So this is basically the data set that we have. Now, this data set is pulled out from IMDB. You can see the URL. This data set is from IMDB. Okay, let me just open that IMDB. This is the data set, right? IMDB data set. Now, let's say I want to talk about um, Avengers. Let's talk about Avengers, okay? Let me say Avengers. Now, look at this as and how I'm typing. You can see all those movies which basically start with Avengers. Right, these are coming up. Wherever the name Avengers are there, it's coming up, right? Now, what do you think? How much time do you think it will require for us to write an application like this? This is a website. Now, imagine how many movies would be there in IMDb. In this website, how many movies do you think will be there? Millions of movies, isn't it? We'll have millions of movies. Now, in that millions of movies, I am trying to search for a certain movie name. So it has to basically 
quickly look into that entire database, millions and millions of records. The data size you can imagine is so huge because you also have unstructured data, images and all that, right? And it has to give you the result out. So if you look at this, how much time do you think it is required for us to achieve this result? Huge time, right? Now we'll focus on the business requirements here, okay? I want a code which can basically give me the result as quickly as possible within seconds, right? Now I don't have that kind of a computer. I have a very simple computer, but still you can see, I will do a quick search on this movies list that we have, in this movies list that I have, based on the movie name that I'm going to type. Right, I'm just trying to search. Right, there are so many movies, I'll just try to search for some movie and get the result out. So let's see the code. This is a simple code. Let me explain the code first and then we will discuss, I uh, will try to execute it. Now I can do this code interactively, right? Line by line, I can uh, execute the code and I will get the results or I can execute this as a single script so that you just enter and everything is right automatically executing itself. So in order to write this as an PySpark or execute like a PySpark script, I need first to have a Spark context. But remember, Spark context is a library. So I'm going to import PySpark, right? I mean, I'm calling Spark context, which is available in PySpark library. PySpark is a Python library. Within that, we have Spark Conf, Spark Configuration, and Spark Context. And I'm calling import sys also. I'm importing sys because we want to also access the um, folders, basically the OS level. Now, I'm defining my Spark Context here by first defining the configuration. So I'm going to say Spark, cost, uh, Spark Config, and here master, I'm going to take single processor, single thread. I have not put local star. If I do this, then I'll have multiple threads based on my laptop, based on my system. But here I'm taking a single thread. Okay, this is name, you can write any name here. So I'm defining my conf configuration. And then I'm saying, hey, my spark context should be of this configuration. If it is a cluster, if you are executing it actually in a cluster with so many movies names, which are distributed right across different data nodes, then to execute all those right uh, different uh, uh, files physically, which are stored in different nodes, data nodes, you will be using yarn as a master here. You will say set master is equals to yarn, right? So I have defined my Spark context. When you say by Spark, in the back end, all these things are getting automatically executed. But here we are manually passing this in the script. Next, once the Spark context is created, remember the building blocks. First, you need Spark context. After the Spark context, we get, uh, we need the RDD, the data, and after the data, we do the operations. So Spark context is defined. Now I'm going after the data. So we have the data file. We have seen that movies.dataset. This is the data set you can see here. I'm loading that. Okay, now what is the primary requirement that we need for it? Out of all these movies, what is that? I mean, the data that we are seeing with respect to movies, 
we specifically want the movie name whether it is there in the list or not i am not interested in all these details these are unnecessary details i don't want to waste my processing capacity so what i do to reduce the computing burden i have to filter out all these unnecessary columns because my condition that i am going to apply is to search movie name that means only this field is required for me now what is the delimiter here in this file what is delimiter yeah tell me friends what is the delimiter that you are seeing in this pipe delimiter exactly if it would have been a comma delimiter that mean comma csv file you would have seen comma but here for every field serial number then you see pipe symbol then you have movie name again pipe symbol year of launch pipe symbol right then i have uh, um i see double pipe symbol there and then i have movie name oh, sorry you are right so so on so forth i have pipe symbol which is segregating the data right so i would use the delimiter and i flat flatten as the flatten the entire file or i should say i will only select this part using split command okay and then choose i mean you are applying filter you are applying uh, split function all these things something that we have done yesterday right oops yes ashna please go ahead ah uh, sir i have some questions with the uh, sorry ashna part. one second no uh, i cannot hear your voice yeah please go ahead ah uh, sir for the spark comp uh for it here that that set master it's local and that set up name is movie search is that uh, predefined or we can put any uh, anything we want for this to uh, you can say any name ashna this is only a name that means this code which is getting executed you are giving some name to it oh okay even set master sir or for example we run we want to run it on hadoop do we need hmm. to change it to hadoop or we can just remain it local okay so if you remember spark context we discussed how spark context can be uh, called in remember the spark context it can be executed in local yes it can be executed on cluster ah, Hadoop, yeah uh, so when you say cluster you are going to give yarn which is the cluster manager you are going to give the name or you are going to pass the parameter for cluster manager like this you're going to say yeah these are local modes oh so it is basically for cluster oh so it we, we it means we need we, we will need to replace the local with the spark and then the host name and that port exactly. on the code oh, okay so Thank how you, many resources you want based on that you are going to define your spark context that is nothing but your master you are setting your master there so i am i am running it local i am saying i want to run my spark on local machine single node because i have single node only right mm -hmm. ideally we are not setting up a uh, cluster and that too i want to use a single thread i am not putting square brackets as well there and putting star there oh, if okay, for this then i am going to get multiple threads yeah this is the syntax you can change your wish thank you sir yeah all right so what we are doing we are loading the file here and then i am using split command that we did yesterday with respect to word count if you remember space was our delimiter for text files right string data we used separator as word uh, sorry space 
Now here I'm splitting the data and identifying each value separately. But what I'm doing from this entire line, one single line, I'm going to choose the value which is there in index one position. What do we have in index one? Movie name. This is index zero. The serial number is index zero. This is the index one. So this is what we are capturing in this file. Titles. Remember, though it is a very big data, for doing the processing, I don't need the entire row. That is all luxury. That is fine. We can first redefine what are those movies that we need to filter out. Once you identify, probably then you can say, copy the entire record. But for now, I'm only interested in name. So I'm reducing the computing burden by only choosing the titles. Next. Once we have the list of movie names, titles, I want to do a search. I'm doing a filter. This is also something we have seen yesterday. I'm going to apply some filter function here and nameless function again. I'm passing X. That X is basically the title, each title. And we are first converting it into lowercase, right? We are searching and then capturing it in lowercase. Search term in x dot lower. So what is search term here? Search term is defined here. This loop if command is basically checking for the length of the system arguments that are passed to your command. How many arguments are there? If you see two arguments, then we want to choose the second argument. Right? And when I execute the code, you'll understand why we are taking the second argument. So on the command prompt, you basically pass the command and then you pass the movie name. So this is basically dynamically choosing the movie name. Now, what if the user doesn't give any movie name? He's just executing this file. In such cases, by default, it, it is searching for gold. The, the file or, or the code is searching for a movie name which would consist gold in it. Either you give a name, right? And if you give a name, it has to satisfy this condition. Right, we are basically passing movie names a single word for now, and then that single word movie name is getting searched. Search term is getting searched here. Then we get this matches, but there might be multiple movies with the same name. Right, we are saying distinct. Even if it is repeated multiple times, <clears throat> excuse me, even if it is multiple times repeated, we don't want to take them. We take distinct values, non repetitive values. Now that is your result. And using this print command, raw format, we are going to print the number of movies, how many movies, matching titles found, how many length of results will tell the number of movies that it has captured. And then the for loop is basically printing the movie names. In the results, it's taking each movie name and then printing it. So you can see very, 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 very simple code. Load the data, choose the relevant field, search for the field, filter, then print it. But taking the distinct values. These are the arguments that we are passing for doing the search. Right now, let us try and execute this. Now, if I have to execute this particular code, let me come here. All I need to do is go to terminal and check for my file. The file name that I want to execute is movie search.py. Right. So in order to execute this in 
your uh, Linux command as a script, we need Spark submit, right? You say Spark submit, and then movie search name. I'll enter. This is Spark of a submit movie search dot py. You can see it is launching Spark. It is an initiating Spark instance and then doing the task. Okay, something failed because I think I have not executed or, or I have not given the right path of my, yes, file name. Okay, let me just quickly edit this. I will say g edit text editor and this is user2. That's it. So give the right path to your file and then let us re execute this. Yeah, it started now. It's reading the file. Done. So here you can see six matching titles found. But I did not give any movie name. I only typed spark hyphen submit and the script name. So in these kind of cases, the script should understand that it has to search for something, right? Very simple code. I'm not writing the logic of identifying that there is no argument and all that, but a very simple, simple code. I'm saying if the user is not passing any argument, then by default take one argument, which is good. Right now, let's say Star Wars. I'll say star. I cannot use star space words because arguments are being identified as single word in our code. Now, remember, I said in the code here, there is length of arguments that we are checking. So for your command, how many arguments are there here? This is your command. This is the first argument. This is the second argument, right? So the length of the system arguments for that function is two. So it is satisfying the condition. It is satisfying this condition. If this condition is satisfied, then we're executing this line, which says take the system argument, which is there in the second position, index one, and put that in the search term. So that star word will become now your search key. Right now, if you see, it is executing. And it will give us the results. Look at this. 20 matching titles found. Now, how much time did it hardly take? Yeah, the full job is finished in 2.577 seconds. 2.5 seconds or 2.6 seconds. Now this is on my system, local system. Now, if, if you talk about IMDB kind of an organization, obviously their system capabilities would be very high. They will have a very big Hadoop cluster, right? For distributed computing. So this is how your Spark can solve the problems in very, very simple way. This is how we execute Spark commands, right, in scripting mode. Right, now let us also see Spark working with SQL capabilities. Now remember, Spark comes with various capabilities, right? Now we are going with Spark SQL. SQL is something which everybody knows. Almost everybody who is working on a computer would kind of understand what is SQL, right? Majority of those people understands that. We are not talking about whether they have hands-on experience or not. We're just saying that they know. Because SQL is the 
oldest right data manipulation or data storing software or that's the language basically sql is sql is so most of the people understand sql spark is pretty new right but if i have to work with big data then we need your spark sql capabilities that is merging spark capabilities and sql capabilities because sql has limitations it is a traditional software it cannot handle the latest of the data that we are basically managing but still if i have to work with huge data right it is structured but it is very huge in such cases we can go with pyspark sql right very simple sql commands only all we need to do is load pyspark this will start the session spark session the spark the, the spark session will automatically contain the required libraries so let me just launch py spark here right so i've launched spy spark and you can see spark is here right when you say spark it is the object spark object which basically is define all these libraries sql context type context right uh, uh, all those uh, spark context everything is there in spark session now i will import this command here i am importing row function import row from pyspark.sql import row now use this is how your python code is written right now using this row function we are going to create data right what is the form of data that i am creating here what can you say this is this is this is like a dictionary okay but yeah it's not exactly as dictionary but it is basically single row we can imagine that this is a tuple right we, we specifically call it as row and it has three fields next if i want to refer to any of these specific row i can pass this row index for getting the results okay let me copy this and then paste here so if i say row 0 it will print the first object right if i say row 1 and row 2 index 0 and index 1 it is going to print both right so this is how we can identify your row id or row object then i also have row with name and age so i am having key and value pair here where key is name value is alex key is age value is 20 when i say row there is a key value pair mapping which is creating it's like a dictionary that we have or in table representation if you talk about it name becomes the table header the value is alex or 20 for both these columns you have the values you can say row to just type that as is you will see that if i say row to dot 
name. It gives you the value, right? Or you can also say row two dot age. Now I want to create data frame, right? From this RDD, I have Spark RDD. Any data object that we create in Spark is an RDD. Now from this RDD, I want to create a data frame. Now this data frame can be created in two ways. One is by using this function 2DF, right? So first I will create a RDD. You can have a Python object and then you can convert it into RDD. So I'm creating a Python object here and then saying, this is RDD, sc dot parallelize. It is here RDD object, Python RDD. Right? Now, from this RDD, all you are going to do is type 2DF. Right? So if I say, So now it is converting your RDD into a proper data frame. And you can say collect, I'll go collect df.collect. It is going to show you like that. You can also say RDD1 collect because RDD1 is also an RDD. So both will say, be same. But remember, we have converted RDD to data frame. So data frame will have schema, right? So if I say show, it will print that in a table format. Right, it is printing it in a table format. You can say df.info schema. In for schema, what is this command? I forgot. Print schema, sorry. My bad. We have that print schema. Now, when you do only RDD, you have RDD1, right? So let me show you. RDD1.show. RDD object has no attribute show. RDD only has collect. But schema RDD has the show object or show attribute, right? You can say RDD one dot print schema. RDD object has no attribute print schema because schema itself is not there for RDD. But for data frame, yes. We have schema RDD. Data frame is nothing but Schema RDD. Right? So, whenever we are trying to work with Spark SQL, we need structured data. And that structured data is nothing but Schema RDD. Right? Next, we can also try and use this create RDD, uh, create data frame function to convert this RDD into a data frame. This way also we can do, right? I am creating another function or another uh, object you can see. I'm calling it as RDD. And then I'm using this SQL context function. So that is your RDD. SQL context dot create data frame on your RDD. You can also say RDD dot collect. Oops, my bad. Yeah. RDD collect is that. And when you say this SQL context, it gives you that row. This is the first object. This is the second object. Key and value pair are getting created, but I don't have key and value. So it is giving us the index. This is the second key. This is the first key, index, right? 
Now, if I try to add the names, I'm basically saying SQL context dot create data frame. Everything is remain same. Rather than saying collect, we are giving name and age and calling this as df. Next, we say df dot collect. We say df dot collect. This is df dot collect. You can see here it is index one, index two. I don't have any value, so it is directly printing index one and index two with numbers. But now I have added name and age. So it is identifying name and age. Replacing that one and two with the names. You can also say df dot show because now it is a data frame you will be able to see the structure always remember if my rdd becomes schema rdd then i can visualize the data in a table format this is like a table representation right so this is about your spark sql but you also have additional tasks to be done we are constructing data frame directly from data source also. Now I have JSON file, right? I already have the JSON file loaded here. You can see business.json, people.json. A very simple JSON file I have kept handy. So I would execute this command And then say people.json slash user2 slash people.json and then choose. So I'm directly loading the data which is there in this people.json folder or a file, sorry. The content within that file is getting loaded into data frame. You say df dot collect. That's df dot collect, and you say df dot show. You get the table, right? So you might want to see what is there in that particular data set or the file. You can try and visualize it. This is how your JSON file looks like. It is dictionary basically. For name here, Michelle, we don't have age. Oh, sorry, Michael. For Michael, we don't have age. Right? So when I executed it, it shows null here. Right? So very simple. And you can also perform these kind of additional queries. If I say print schema, it is automatically it is automatically reading the content df dot print schema right then we have name df dot select select queries sql queries right on data frame df i want to write select query select name and the result i want to show in this format dot show means you get the output in a table representation. You can also do df age plus one and execute this. So when you do this, it is printing name as is, but on df dot age, the second column, or this column that you're getting, you're going to add one to it. So 30 became 31. This is 30 and this is 90. Null will remain null. Remember, it doesn't change. So 30 became 31, 19 become 20. Right? So that's SQL queries. Now we also have Yelp data set. Okay, this is basically talking about some of the uh, you can say restaurants, hotels. 
So it has a big data. This is already shared with you people. If I'm not mistaken, just cross check if you have this data file, business.json. If you do not have, let me know. I'll, I'll basically get it uploaded. But yeah, just cross check. And uh, basically this is a big file. It's 247, uh, 245 KB. Let me try and open that and show you. Yeah, this is basically the data file that you have. Huge file. Right? Yeah. So this is basically how we have to work with. So let, uh, you might want to run this, guys. So I'll say read.json file. Then I'll say user2. And then we'll say business.json. My memory is not good enough. My memory is not supporting. So it's giving me a warning message saying, truncated the string representation of a plant since it was too large. So my memory couldn't store the data, right? And you also have sparkenv.com where you might want to set the debugging messages here max to string fields, you can also try and adjust those parameters based on your system configurations. Right, so I've loaded the data set, but this is big data, right? So you can also see print schema and we can try and create a temporary table for doing manipulations. Look at that, this is such a big file, right? It has a lot of columns, right? So rather than working with such a big data, I mean data frame, we are trying to create a temporary repository. So we're registering this this data set as a temporary table. And then I'm trying to save that in memory. Right? So we are basically storing the data into your memory. Explicitly, I'm trying to store, okay? So, so many fields are there. Now, if I have to work with SQL queries, this is basically one of the ways where I can write my SQL queries. Select count of one as business from this. Right, and then I want to see this. So if I say SQL context dot SQL, then the select query can be understood. And then you are seeing the result. Yes, one file. Select one, right? Count one as businesses from biz. So we are trying to look at businesses field. So let me try and open this in Notepad if I can. Yeah. So these are all different businesses that we have. And uh, we are looking at these additional fields. Right? So you can see such a big data is given. So from all that data, we are pulling out single result count of one. Right? So this is your count of one. This is hanged.
yeah you can see all these are different results it's it's getting slow so let me not play around with this file it's a very big file bigger than uh, the movies data set imp data set so let's minimize this let's not play with that then we can also try and group by select basically select state and count count of one as businesses from this business your data frame group by state so the data can be grouped by state and then you want to basically see first 50 right if i don't pass anything then it gives me first 20 records by default let's see it's giving only three if i say five still three right because there's nothing i mean there are only three different groups a as a z then we have null and then all the other right uh, basically university fall under the same businesses right so we, we have a column called businesses which has some meaning to it like the type of business that we are doing here okay so it's, it's basically pulling the data from this data set okay this is your business id you can see or address basically okay now if i run this same way the same way the previous command is executed but it is somehow not getting selected yeah yeah select state count as businesses from group by and you want to order the based on the decreasing order of your results so it's just adding sorting sorting part that's it then you will also say name stars review count state you want to get all those things for five star rating movies how many you want to select five first in from this particular segment so we need name we need the stars we need review count the city the state so these are the fields that we have made a request of so we have name we have five star rating it is exactly equal to five that's one of our conditions right then we have review meeting uh, sorry review count and then we have city and state we are capturing those also right so it is printing that right so this is how we basically capture sql context uh, the movie names are we are basically doing some kind of manipulations here right so now i also want to see the states which belong to nv so another additional where command that i'm putting state is equals to nv and star is equals to five there's nothing right if i say pa or if i say four dot five star let's say four star let's see there's nothing if i say any there's nothing if i say pa then these are given i'm putting equal to i'm not putting greater than remember you can also do greater than four it will print five star rating values also right then sum of the review count so let's see this what is the sum overall sum of the review counts so 4335 reviews reviews count as that so we are capturing sum of the review count this review count and then we are adding 
all the values and putting that as these views. Right? So you can see these review counts are given. Select stars. Select stars from right your bills by grouping the stars. So one star, two star, three star, right? Like this, we will group the data. Right, and you can also sort this by the replying sort function, either on stars or from businesses perspective, you can arrange the data in some order. So right from one, it starts one, 1.5, 2, then we have 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, and then finally 5. Right, so it is looking into all the unique stars count. Average of review count. We have done what? Here, you are basically taking group by. Here, I am doing average count. Right, it is average count. Right, next. Round it off. You are doing average, but round it off, and you are also doing ordered by. So, a lot of SQL manipulation, right, commands are basically applying here. Yes. Uh, so question. Uh, for example, you have uh, because here I can see that our data set is made from that JSON. For example, I have a pile that is that SQL. Will it still work? Yes. So it's the same way I import that JSON. Is it the same yes. way for that SQL extension also? Yes, 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 yes. You need to understand uh, the command. You just explore on how to connect. SQL dot SQL file into Spark. That's it. You should get readily available the command name. Replace, re, uh, read this uh, command file, right? Yeah, because here it's that JSON. Yes. So read dot C JSON file, that, that command which we have, you replace that. That's it. Okay. Thank you. So this is the command. If it is CSV file, we generally see in, ML, uh, in MLlib, we work with CSV. So it will be CSV. Spark.read.csv. So very, very simple commands. Try that. All right. So this, this way we basically write some of the manipulative codes that we can do for Spark SQL. Structured query language, right? Hence, your data has to be structured. Even if it is on big data, if data is structured, then we can apply Spark SQL queries. In ML, we will see there are a few more steps that, I mean, we will work with Spark SQL regularly because for ML, we need schema, data frame, right? So we'll, we'll work with Spark SQL there. Now, let me talk about ML. -Lib. So this is about Spark SQL, guys. The codes are shared with you. You might want to just explore them. Now, let me talk about Spark ML. So I also ha I have logistic regression model on climate's data set. So this is the code that, I mean, this is the data set that we have already used in DS for doing prediction on attorney. So we have attorney, right? And we want to predict that based on this data set. Case number, of course, is not required. So we can eliminate that. Then we have to predict it only. That means that is your output. Then we have the gender, claim and sex. Then we have claim and insurance. Then we have seat belt. Then we have age. Then we have loss. Right? So all these are different fields. We have already seen this data. 
Now let us try and apply some machine learning algorithms. You already have this Ashner in data science field while doing data science. In logistic regression, we use this data set. So that's the same data set that we are using. You can, you can get that data set from the DS models. Yeah. You have the code, right? Code is important. Do you have code? Oh, code is also not there. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll get it uploaded. For now, you can just take it from chat window. I'll get it uploaded there. I'm not sure why it is not there, but yeah, let me just. I'll just try to give you the data. Where do I have this? Crazy. This part will be too difficult for me. So take this and put it on this. Right? And I will take the desktop and this is the file. Yeah. I'm sharing it in the chat. Uh, chat window. You might want to just download it. Okay. Let me open this file and then we'll discuss what is this file doing here. Yeah. Okay. So we, okay, this is basically command which is in Windows file. This this is not required. If you are running in Windows, probably this is required. So it says find Spark and then initialize the Spark by Spark. That those are the commands that we do it in Windows. They are not required. From PySpark.sql, we are importing Spark session. Now, when you import Spark session, it is importing all the required modules, Spark context, all those things, right? It, it also imports SQL context, hive context, all that. So we're importing Spark session. Right? And then we are creating an application called regression. Spark session, build an application with this name. You either get or create this application called regression. Right, and we are calling this as Spark. So your Spark session will be now called as Spark. Then we are reading the data. Okay. Wherever the data, the, the path is, you can just choose that path. When, when I execute it in the Linux, I would be say slash home. Okay, let me just erase this so that you understand what we are typing here. So I'll say slash home slash user two, and then my data set, famous data set. Now here I would pass header is equals to true because my data set in Clayman's data set we have seen, it also has headers. The first row is the title, right? Movie title for your, sorry, that, uh, not movies data set, this is Clayman's data set. So for the Clayman's data set, the first row is the titles. Then we have infer schema. When we are trying to load the data set, which is in CSV format, we are saying that you also infer the schema, right? Interpret the schema for each field, right? Now, next we have print schema. This is to check what is the different schemas that we have or, or what is the data type for each, each column that it has loaded. Next, I need to import pandas. Okay, we need to have pandas in order to work with data frames. Python understands data frames. Okay. So we are basically taking data frame here or converting the data frame here we are taking 10 fields or 10 rows right with the columns this is to you can say visualize 
you, you get the data frame printed there on the screen. You can also say transpose so that the rows and columns will get changed so that you can see the data in a proper way. Generally, when you have too many columns, the screen would not show you all the columns. In such case, we transpose that. So rows will become columns, columns will become rows. So this is basically to load the data set. All these things are to load the data sets. Now, once the data set is ready, you, we are basically pulling out only numeric columns. Okay, this is a small command uh, where you, if you don't want non-numeric fields, you can ignore them. So all we are doing is from the data, you take the data types and identify all those values which are I integer. Right? And select only those. We are only selecting integers here. Right? Or you can say not equal to character. That way also you can put. That way you are going to get integers as well as float. Then you are going to choose or see how many fields you have captured. What are those fields? Right? And then you also see print schema. You are converting that data into data frame or into a proper uh, schema RDD. And then we are inferring the schema. So this is to capture only the numeric fields from your data set. Then this is specifically the, I mean, there's these record, uh, these commands that you're seeing are important. Till here, these are important commands. For almost all the machine learning algorithms, we need the steps in Spark. So I'm going to import Spark, PySpark ML dot features. These are feature uh, manipulating commands or, or I should say functions. The first one is string indexer. Then string indexer is basically like you are going to, uh, it, it's for label encoding you can see. Okay. Then we have vector assembler. Vector assembler is basically converting your data frame, the fields that we have, right? All those input fields that we have, we are converting that into a vector, a single vector, right? Choose all the fields where which are relevant. You don't need case number. We will delete this. So we'll choose only these case, uh, these uh, five inputs. Right? And when we pass this five input columns as list, right? we pass this as input, the vector assembler should give us a single field called features. Right? And that feature basically is nothing but a single vector, which contains all the fields. And because we need vector, we have to choose all the data or, or we need to manipulate the data in such a way that all the fields are of same data type. Next, we have stages. The stages basically is to iteratively get your vectors uh, created, vector created for each and every row. Now, if I have invalid, get handle invalid G, right? You're basically handling invalid values. We are saying skip. If the value is invalid, skip it. If your value is an A, then you want to get replacements. Transform, replacements, show three. So it's going to replace your NAs. Remove that basically. Then we have string indexer, the output column is getting converted into a label, label encoder, right? You get the values labeled as one, zero, so on and so forth. Now, this logic that we have created here is getting 
executed by using pipelines. When I say pipeline, generally what happens is in the data, whenever you are talking about data, new fields keep adding, right? Here. So it will start here and it, the data will get keep adding into your database. Now the logic that we have written here, right? It takes each record and then converts it into a vector and you have output which is converted into label. Then next row, vector, label, next row, vector, label, so on and so forth. Right? So this is called as pipeline. Pipeline means you're building a pipeline like this where you're saying the flow of the data should be in the same format. Especially when you're dealing with a lot of pre-processing, then you'll automate that pre-processing process using pipelines. So when I execute this, all these things are converted. Th these things actually get executed here, action operations. And then we have selected columns. We have label and features. These are your actual columns on which we do training, right? So we are combining this list along with the input, which is already a list. This is called a selected columns and we are converting the selected columns into a data frame. Prepare the data frame, right? And then you can see your columns structure basically in schema. Now, once your data is ready for Spark, if your data is ready for Spark, then we use logistic regression. You can see it is very similar to what we have in your regular, right? Python coding. The only thing is the library is not a scalar, the library is Spark ML. And it is classification, Spark ML classification model. Import this. And then you are executing this, you are training. Right here, you are basically defining what is your logistic regression. It takes inputs and outputs, and we are doing max iterations into 10. 10 times you are going to repeat this iterations. And here you are fitting the data. That's it. The model is getting ready. Just like your Python code, you, you basically call the function, pass input and output and get things done. First you train it, and then probably you can do a prediction here. Print coefficients and intercept, you get the equation. Then you randomly partition your data, and then you can try and get your test data predictions. Rather than dot predict, you'll have transform. And you will see the result. So this is a simple logistic regression model that we have. Okay. The same code can be run in Windows also and in your Python as well. But in Python, the first thing we need to check is will I be able to import this? import function will import function work let me just quickly check this so first come out of your pyspark and then check this import command in our form oh sorry my bad i have to be in python only right so i have to be in pyspark only my bad. Python 2.7.5. Python 2.x basically. And if I execute this import command, it should throw error. Hey, very good. It is working. For you, it will throw error. <laughs> is it throwing error? Check. It will throw error for sure. Let me see. 
where is my code i wanted to show you small steps are there we need to run those steps i'll just give you the steps one second Where did I put this? Mm. Spark, 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 spark. Import command. You need to basically install pip on your instance. Because this is open source, you'll not have pip installed on your systems. So we need to do that. Um, lost, I, I forgot where did I put that command. Ah, I got it. Yeah, this is basically what you need to do. You need to bring in your, or draw, uh, your pip software. So I'm just sharing these commands on your chat window to share, save these files. Are you are you getting error or not? If you, when you do import pandas as pd, try out in PySpark, and if you get error, do these steps. The the five steps that I have given. Basically, what we are doing here is we are importing pip software here or we are installing pip software into your system that that pip software is not installed without that tool you cannot install any package right and when you say sudo you are basically giving admin permissions to install softwares on your computer so the existing user that we are logging in is like a regular user it doesn't have admin privileges but if you remember when we created we said it can take admin permissions right so sudo basically is like uh, i should say um not exactly the admin but it, it gets basically the uh, powers of of an administrative uh, administrator for limited limited commands it can do basically especially in the installation stages right whenever we want to install something that the user should have admin permissions because you are altering the os i mean basically at the os level right so in such cases we need to have admin permissions and sudo helps to get that so do sudo yum install epel hyphen release when you do that it is basically giving us the first few uh, right confirmation basically it's checking all the dependencies and all that and it will ask you to update right uh, some of your libraries you say yes and once it is installed the first command once it is comes out then you do this it is going to install python pip software and then make sure you check python version here if i do that i have python i oh, sorry i have pip which is 20.3.3 Okay, this is the location where my pip got installed. Are you able to do that? Any challenges, anyone? These five commands is what, or four commands is what we need to do. I already have it, so it's not throwing any error. Please do that. And let me know if you face any errors, guys. You need to successfully import 
pandas like this. Okay, without error, you should be able to do this. Yeah. I'm waiting. Let me know once this uh, those uh, pip software installation is done. Okay. Mm. Command Python setup. Error code one in temp. It's not able to install properly. Setup for. Not not sure. Uh, is this the full error message, Ashna, or do we have any other error message? Ah, invalid syntax, okay. Um, is available you should consider upgrading via pip install upgrade just do this pip install hyphen hyphen upgrade pip before sudo pip you do that install a uh, pip install hyphen hyphen upgrade pip this is basically a, a version mismatch issue i think pip 8 is very very old so there is some issue with that version that should uh, upgrading pip should resolve this issue okay anyone else any other issues Yeah, guys, are you able to install? Yeah, please confirm. Mm. Okay. Sh shall we see the screen? We share it once. Okay. Um, yesterday's issue did not resolve, Shruti. Oh God, okay. That's strange. Hmm, okay, sure. Ashton, you want to share the screen? Yeah, please share your screen.
Now you don't need to go to root. Not required. If you are in root, sudo is also not required. But don't use root, please. Come out. Don't use root. Come out. Okay. Sudo. Now say sudo. Hmm. Give the admin password. Okay. What does it say? Load entry point pip. Uh, do pip version that command. Pip version command. Ah, pip installation is properly not done, I think. Why is it throwing error? Uh, so, uh, before I do, it's working. Then after I update, it suddenly becomes like this. After I use pip the one that is the preliminary error. Hmm. But did you use root to install this? Yes. Uh, okay. Because I don't, if we use root, I don't need to type the password anymore. So it's directly installing hmm. everything. But when you do it in root, the other users will not have permission. So that's the challenge. Um, uh, it's okay, sir, because I think I installed the whole Spark Hadoop H base on root. Oh, everything in root. Yes, everything is on root. Okay. It's not able to load basically file line number, load entry point. There is an issue there. I can try to reinstall again the initial. Uh, no, but this is some new error with respect to pip. Pip completely, it's not working. Can you read reinstall the pip software itself? Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's. Can you share it again, sir? Because currently I'm using a different PC now. Please. Okay, one second, let me just copy and paste that. Yeah, there you go. In the chat window, I pinged. Okay, let me try it. So first sudo yum ship function insert so yes installing yes okay so it's complete next is sudo, sudo install, yum python. install uh python pip dash pip so what is it's it? already installed in latest version. Okay. Then let's try pip dash dash version. So it becomes like this one. I think they also encountered same error. Okay, which Python? Just type which Python? Which is Python? Space, space, which space Python? It has Python. Okay, do same thing, which pip? We have also pip. Um, do ls. Okay. Uh, no, ls. Wait, 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 I mean, ls space slash usr slash bin slash pip. Okay. Do ls hyphen l. They're just up command. Same command ls hyphen l. Okay. It is in root. I'll say id. Enter. Okay. Going to root. This is a problem if we use root. So I install again, right, sir? Yeah. Okay, Just let me try. Once, once you try and do that. Overall, yeah. 
Okay, okay so nothing. let installed sudo yum install python dash pip. So it's okay. Pip okay. dash dash version. Then from now So we need to check what is this error. I need to check. Okay. I think this is the error that is popping on. Yeah. Uh, it's just check in Google if you can. Uh, anyways, you have ping me the error message, right? I'll also check. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what is the error that you are getting, Shruti? Uh, sorry. Who's the message? Ping me someone. Shruti only address, right? Yeah, Shilpa, sorry. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, no, there, yeah. It's not an error. It's not an error. Okay. So what should I do in this case? Next, type the next command. I I tried to type the next command pip version. Uh, I'm getting there a command not found. Oh, okay. Strange errors. Okay, share your screen once. Okay. Let me see. Uh, maximize this also. No, you can say shift control plus. Zoom zoom in shift control plus. You type again. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Wait. Let me check. No package. Exist exiting on. Okay. You did not install it. While trying to install only, I'm getting this uh, error. No, no, no. The up, you can see there, mm -hmm. go a little few lines above. Uh, there, exiting on user command. There, you did not say yes. Okay. Read on that code. Read on that okay. line, say yes, and then follow the next commands. Okay, sure. Thank you. Okay, so let's run this code. So I'll change this to home slash user two. I'll be executing it line by line. Okay, let's say PySpark. I've already entered into PySpark, right? And then we'll try to run line by line now, okay? So I'll see if I'm able to import this, okay. Spark session, Spark is there. So let me try and do this. Hmm. The error says no file system for schema. File system is not there. Java error, okay. Okay, so let me say. Import this. Spark session, and we can keep this name and just check whether it is properly taking the name or not. And yes, Spark session is created. Now we'll try to load the data set. <laughs> Why is it throwing error? Why is it throwing error? Metadata directory. <laughs> what did I miss? What did I miss? Spark, spark read CSV. 
Did I run in for schema? Did I not run in for schema? In for schema is also there. Oh, okay. My bad. Ah, I'm giving the wrong path. It's not C colon. It is not there in HDFS. File stolen slash slash. This is to guide Spark that I want to read the data from local file system. Done. So let me make those changes. I fail to update that file colon slash slash. Okay, this is to read the data from local file system. Now, if I say infer schema print schema see it says case number is integer attorney is integer claim in six insurance seat belt everything is integer except for loss loss is double double basically means it's the data type is in decimals right so next let me take this I've already imported this, but you want to import that, you can re-import this and then we are taking the data frame here to view the data frame. Because I have less number of columns, I'm able to do that. If I have a huge number of columns, then everything will not fit in this single row. Then you can say dot transpose. This command, if you see, I'll just run it for you but it is not relevant here. It changes the rows, uh, I mean, it, it prints the rows here and columns here. If you have a huge number of columns, then all those huge number of columns can be printed like rows. So you will be able to see all the columns, right? So this is just a manipulative command to view the data. So here it is not required, I can just check this, right? Next. I'm trying to capture only the integer columns. Okay, numeric features. It is a list of values which are equal to integer. Right? Then you are converting that into a data frame. df.select these fields and then to describe using pandas, you are converting them. And also you are printing, transposing and printing them. If you remove the transpose, you will get all those values here. Right? If I remove this transpose, this is like your summary describe function. Look at this. I would not be able to print everything, right? This is exactly what would happen if I have huge number of columns here. Hence, we are doing transpose. Okay. Now I'll be able to see all the columns, right? For this reason, we do the transpose. Next. Sorry. Next, I'm choosing this DF column. I mean, the numeric features, I'm writing DF. So into DF1, I'm choosing these columns. Now you can see I have only integer values, right? Next, import PySpark vector assembler. Hope there is no change here in these libraries. And then let's try and execute this. So all these are uh, commands. Okay, let me just remove the case number and execute here. Case number is not required. So I'm going to remove case number and create that list. This case number is not required. Then I create the assembler and then stages. This is to create the pipeline so that we can convert everything into a single vector. Hmm.
this is not defined. Why is it not defined? Again, there is some change. Let me just check this. These keep these are uh, algorithms. They keep changing every now and then. We have to closely keep updating the code as well. Here I have in uh, null values, so I'm getting this issue. Okay, let me just check this. The latest code. I will check here. Spark. Okay, I don't have it here. Give me a second, guys. I'm just trying to pull it out. I have recommendation engine code, it doesn't have there. So let's ignore that and proceed further and see what happens. Basically, I, I have NA fields in my data set. Okay, I'm not able to clean NAs. So that part is missing. But let's see if I try to do pipelining, am I able to transform my data into vectors or not? So let us see this. So I'm selecting labels and then selecting features, but along with that, I'm also passing my input features and then converting the selected columns into RDD and yes, I'm able to do that. So you can see here, I have label and I have features, which is basically a vector. So I'm selecting all these columns and then creating a vector here. TF2 dot show so it's 10. If you see, you can observe here label is your output, that is your attorney, and then feature is nothing but the combination of all these values. Right? Combination of all this six columns. Right? So not, not six, only five, we have not taken loss into input. When I build the inbuilt features here, did I pass that? Oh, okay, I have passed the loss also. So I got features with all these six columns, right? So it is converting that into vector. Now for training purpose, we need to pass this vector as an input. Okay, you can also say data frame, column names is this. This is also to view. Same way, rather than show, I'm doing this into data frame. Here you can see this is your feature vector. And this is your input basically. Now I'm importing logistic regression library. I've imported that. Then I'm training it here. First, define your logistic regression and then fit on the final data set that we have chosen. It's warning. And let us say to print the coefficients and the intercepts. So this is your intercept beta naught and you have coefficients beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 beta 4 and beta 5 for your vectors that we have passed as an input 
right? This is beta naught. So you have successfully created the logistic regression equation. You can also do predictions here. Rather than partitioning, you can pass the entire data set. I'll, I'll just pass this entire data set and then you can select DF2. You can just say DF2. Rather than test, you can just say DF2 for training, oh, sorry, predicting. And you can see predicting the first five records. So it is basically predicting the first five records. Predictions dot select labels and features show five. So this is your predictions results. So we have successfully tried to predict the output. Yeah, so this is how logistic regression works in Spark. Right, so we were not able to do this commands, these three. So basically, handling NAs was not done. Well, I'll get back to this and check what has changed in these libraries, and then we'll have to replace that to get the NA uh, fields also managed. Right, so little tricky. PySpark is a little heavy on coding part because you are still learning it. It, it seems to be really difficult. Uh, one logic that you need to remember is your input that you are passing should be a vector. Okay, so we are transforming the input fields, multiple fields that we have, individual columns into a single vector. And we pass this as input for training. If you take any of the algorithms, this is the default steps that we have to do. Right, so this is about uh, Spark ML on um, your Linux instance. So tomorrow we will try and learn how to implement this on Spider on Windows, right? I'll, I'll explain how to install in Windows. Again, it's three steps. You'll be able to do that. Once it is installed on Windows, you will be using Spider to work with Spark. Same code, same code, but in Spider. So tomorrow probably we'll try and look into the decision tree code I have shown, right? We can try and do clustering or maybe we can try and do decision tree we have both we can try both in fact all right so that's it for the day mlip okay you're not able to still load it okay share your screen let's see Mm -hmm. No module called named pandas. Pip install, you need to first install, right? Oh, yeah. Did you pandas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. No, 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 not this. Install pandas. You did not install pandas. Let me check. You need to say sudo pip install pandas. Ah, you're also getting the same error. This is strange. How come?
uh, sir, once you update, you will encounter this error. No, I've not checked it. She is also getting the same yeah, error. it's the same. Because she updated. Once you updated, you will get the error. If you don't update and you try to install Pandas, it will throw an error also. So probably but, this is mismatch uh, compatibility issue with uh, the Python old version and people yeah. just... I was thinking maybe installing Python 3 will do the trick. But yes. I'm not sure if it will run the no, I was, syntax that you have. No, it will work. It will work. Same commands. It's nothing changed. I, rather than updating Python 2 to 3, I just thought let's have pip installed. I have Python 3 installation steps. Let me just share that otherwise. Uh, it would be easy. You can follow that and get your Python updated. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, it's just an experiment. Uh, I'm thinking that it is the issue with that change only, version mismatch only. Mm -hmm. Where is this? Spark. Okay, these are the steps. I'm just sharing it in the link here, the chat window here. Follow these steps and you should be able to update your Python to Python 3. You might want to save them and do a text file or something, save them. Uh, third question, in the code that you have sent, there's a comment on Python sudo yam install python 36-pip. Do we uncomment it or Let are we go? Okay, the step number four. Okay. Okay, that is to get specific version. If so you want to get by default, okay, so by default, it will get the latest version. Ah, uh, yes, but um, yeah, it should get it should get Python uh, three. Do three six uh, better. You do three six. Three six, sir. Okay. Yeah. Because the rest of the commands that I've shared, everything says three six only. So probably you might want to stick to that. Mm -hmm. It will take time. Ah, uh, sir, I also did that. I update the yum. It won't work. No, that is to make sure that the latest updates are there. Uh, we are trying to install the Python uh, uh, latest version. So mm -hmm. your M has to uh, update. Okay. It's a default step. You have to do that first to install the latest version. Okay, try out this one. If you're not getting, probably you might want to message me. We'll see how to resolve it. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Okay, Ashner, you also try it out. Let's see if it works fine. Otherwise, we'll try to see a workaround. Okay, sir. Sure. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Good night.